It was the height of the Cold War, and U.S. scientists and engineers were working tirelessly to develop the world's first thermonuclear fusion bomb. The project, dubbed Operation Ivy, was set to trigger the most powerful explosion in human history by unleashing 10.4 megatons of energy, 450 times the power of the bomb dropped on top of Nagasaki. The U.S. was desperate to beat the Soviets and attain this world-shattering technology, making all necessary preparations for it to be an iconic and unprecedented event. Then, on November 1st, 1952, a burst of scorching light and destruction like the world had never seen ruptured the sky and covered the horizon in an ominous orange haze. The cameras on Alugalab Island in the Inuitak Atoll of the Marshall Islands recorded the humbling blast as a colossal white mushroom cloud could be seen for miles. As the Americans showed their military and technological supremacy to the world, they also unveiled groundbreaking scientific discoveries, knowledge that they would secretly keep for themselves. Beyond the A-bomb. The cataclysmic debut of nuclear weaponry in 1945 demonstrated to the world the lethality that human-made destruction could reach. The bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki had single-handedly cut World War II short, forcing the Japanese Empire to capitulate even after stating that they would fight to the end. As the curtains of the nuclear age unfurled, the world's superpowers were determined to take nuclear technology as far as it could go. Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, known as the father of the nuclear age, had considered the idea of using a fission reaction, like the one produced by an atom bomb, to trigger a much more devastating fusion reaction as early as 1940. Fermi shared his idea with Edward Teller, with whom he worked on the Manhattan Project, developing the first atomic bombs. Still, with the end of World War II, all interest in a weapon thousands of times more potent than the recently employed atomic bomb subsided. However, the Soviets tested their first atom bomb in 1949, much sooner than America had projected, and they knew that the next step for the Soviets would be to develop a thermonuclear bomb. A passionate debate ensued, with some scientists arguing that developing such a weapon was irresponsible, while others saw it as inevitable. Still, if the Soviets beat them to the technology, the U.S. would face the risk of destruction. Teller Ulam Design Ultimately, the U.S. decided to go ahead with the development of a thermonuclear device, and on January 31, 1950, President Harry S. Truman greenlit a program to develop a hydrogen bomb. The design was led by Edward Teller, who designed a weapon based on the theories of Fermi. At the time, Teller and his team called the concept of a hydrogen bomb the super. For months, the design faced one technical obstacle after another, and the idea that the very concept might be impossible to develop was considered for a moment. In a contrived chain of events, many scientists working on the super did everything they could to develop the technology, while also hoping it would be impossible to do so. As time passed, and no feasible design was achieved, it looked like the concept was genuinely impossible to materialize. However, a breakthrough idea from the Polish expatriate mathematician Stanislaw Ulam was incorporated into Teller's concept in 1951, resulting in the first workable design for a megaton-range hydrogen bomb. The concept came to be known as the Teller-Ulam design, and it entailed a device activated in specific stages and within specialized chambers inside the weapon casing. The major breakthrough was the separation of the fission and fusion mechanisms, and to use the radiation caused by the fission bomb to first compress the fusion fuel before igniting it, causing the thermonuclear reaction. The elegant design was so well put together that it convinced all remaining detractors that the hydrogen bomb was not only possible, but it was unavoidable, and it would just be a matter of time before the Soviets caught up to the idea. After a small-scale test to guarantee the mechanisms worked correctly, the first full-scale thermonuclear detonation was programmed for November 1st, 1952.
preparation. As the project advanced, some detractors made last-ditch attempts to halt the detonations. One of the most iconic cases was made by the State Department Panel of Consultants on Disarmament, chaired by J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atom bomb. Oppenheimer felt that avoiding a test might forestall the development of a catastrophic new weapon and open the doors for future arms agreements between the nations. Alas, he and his team couldn't amass the necessary political pressure to convince Washington to halt the project's development and the scheduled tests move forward. The early Teller Ulan design prototype lacked many engineering adaptations to make it mobile, and the initial iteration resembled more a factory building than a portable warhead. The entire device weighed 74 metric tons, and it was housed in a large corrugated aluminum building called the Shot Cab, which was 88 feet long, 46 feet wide, and 61 feet high, with a 300-foot signal tower installed nearby. The massive building was located on the Pacific island of Iligulab, part of the Anuatak Atoll. The area became an intricate scientific complex, with Iligulab Island connected to neighboring islands by a 9,000-foot artificial causeway. On top of this path was an aluminum-sheathed tube filled with helium balanese, which allowed gamma and neutron radiation to pass without restrictions to instruments in the unmanned detection station 202, located on a second island. A wide array of instruments was set up on the station and the neighboring islands to record all the data released by the blast, including camera and film equipment that recorded the entire event. The detonation. On November 1st, 1952, the American personnel was stationed 50 miles from the detonation site on ships. Then, at 7.15 a.m. local time, the test was finally carried out. As the device was activated, it produced a yield of 10.4 megatons of TNT, which initially manifested itself as a colossal fireball with a radius of 2.1 miles. The menacing fireball then rose as a second sun due to buoyancy, creating a cataclysmic scene for the spectators to see. As the fireball kept rising, it tainted the sky orange, while thermonuclear explosion-induced lightning struck all around the flaming sphere, making the hellish scene even more daunting. Then, after the fire subsided, a massive mushroom cloud rose to an altitude of 56,000 feet in less than 90 seconds, and stabilized at the height of 135,000 feet, with its top part eventually spreading out to a diameter of over 100 miles. The blast created a crater of 6,230 feet in diameter and 164 feet deep, completely erasing the island of Alugalab off the map. In addition, the explosion and ocean waves stripped the islands clean of all vegetation, while radioactive coral debris fell upon ships positioned more than 35 miles away. The different sensors and filters set up by the researchers captured considerable amounts of material that they hoped would help uncover the elusive, undiscovered elements 99 and 100 that had been only theoretically predicted. As expected, the scientists were able to detect the existence of two new elements, which were eventually named in honor of Albert Einstein and Enrico Fermi, Einsteinium and Fermium. The novel elements had been produced by intensely concentrated neutron flux at the detonation site. To ensure the scientific supremacy of the U.S., the discovery was kept secret for several years as they underwent thorough and exhaustive testing. Eventually, public credit for the discovery was given to the experiment's researchers, but only after a scientific advantage was attained by the U.S. The astonishing footage remains a reminder of the relentless destruction man can unleash in the pursuit of ultimate power. Thank you for watching our video. What do you think of this impressive footage? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and share our video. And for more amazing history-inspired content, subscribe to all the other Dark Documentaries channels, where we post new content every day.